rest of the afternoon, I read a bunch, went for a long walk, and made myself a can of chili for supper. There wasn't much on TV. I flipped through the channels. Three of them were showing news reports on the hearings. I stopped on a spaghetti western, one of the ones made in Spain with Italian actors. It kept my mind off being alone. After it was over, I tuned into the station to see if Carl was on yet. Carl told me that his little group of DJs had a following in Barton, which was five times the size of Garson. He said the fans from Barton liked Carl and his buddies because they didn't play all that syrupy pop crap. They played strange stuff, and not just music. On late night Garson radio, CFRJ, you could hear jazz, poetry, or parts of books that Carl called countercultural. He liked to read from the book Electric Kool-Aid something. One night when I was up late, I heard him read it on air, all about crazy people, hippies driving around in a bus, but I didn't really get it. Carl hadn't come on yet. I stared out our bay window onto the road, which was super dark. The streetlight had been flickering on and off all week. No one from the city had come to fix it yet. The streetlight flickered on and shone a long light into the living room. I went to the window just as a car sped down the street full of teenagers, with music blaring out of the windows. The moon hung low, hovering over the school, a warm egg yolk color. I hadn't noticed it being out there before, like it had bubbled out of one of the tall metal chimneys on the gym roof. A lot of days in the fall it was that color, except the nights when it came out like a flashlight, cold and white. That's when I knew winter was coming. Somewhere in between, there was what my grandfather called a harvest moon. The first time I saw one, I was just a little kid, but I still remember it. It was all orangey-red, like it was bleeding. I figured something terrible must have happened. I remember I felt like crying. My grandfather was outside with me, and he must have known that I was getting weirded out. He let out a low whistle and said, Harvest Moon. I thought he'd made that up on the spot. He was dead now, but when I saw a moon like that, I thought of him on a farm, on a deep red tractor, going up and down the field, the moon hanging above him and showing him the way.
warm color was drained out of tonight's moon, like it was running low on batteries. From our place, I could just see the top of the school. I squinted into the dark space beside the school, thinking there was some answer to where Brian had gone. The last place I saw him was at school. Brian, what the hell happened to him? Where did he go? Did he really try to leave me a note? A circle of fog formed under my chin as I stared out our bay window. One time, Brian showed me this book that said that when radio waves floated into space, people on other planets could still hear them ten years later. Somewhere in a whole different galaxy, people, or whatever creatures were on that planet, could hear old news programs or songs and announcers giving the play-by-play -play on a hockey game. The space creatures could hear Carl and his late-night buddies read from that Kool-Aid book. The book also said the same thing happened with our voices, that they were sound waves too, and that they traveled up through the atmosphere and into space. Just like the radio, space travelers with advanced equipment could hear our conversations. That sort of thing made my brain hurt, but it was a cool idea. Maybe Brian's voice still floated around out there, not gone up into space yet. If I just stopped thinking and listened with every part of me, maybe I could hear something. I put on a jacket and went outside. I stood on the front steps. Wind rustled through the trees by the ballpark. I shut my eyes. I heard a car pick up speed and then a dog barked, low and echoing. The faint sound of a bell rang, miles away. But I had to be imagining that. What bell was there in Garson that would ring so late at night? Underneath my thin jacket, my arms were goose-pimpled from the cold. I clenched my eyes. I heard my own breathing. I tried to picture Brian. What was he wearing that morning at school? What did he say to me the last time I saw him? What did his voice sound like? If he were hurt, if someone hurt him, would he sound like himself? I said out loud, my voice low, Are you out there? Underneath my eyelids, an oval formed, reminding me of the school track. I stayed like that for a while, trying to see something in the oval. I rubbed my arms through my jacket. When I opened my eyes, the streetlight flickered on. Brian? I whispered. After a few more minutes, I went back inside. Back on the TV, Channel 6 was showing their Dusk Till Dawn horror fest. I must have dozed off and woke up to the phone ringing. Who the heck called this late? I turned down the TV, thought about my parents on a plane, and my stomach did a flip. I sprinted for the phone. Jay, is that you?